Welcome to today's third lecture uh, for optimization methods for machine learning and engineering. Today will be on inequality constraint optimization. So the agenda for today is to first see some notions of topology, which is a topic from mathematics. We will see just some basic elementary definitions there that we need later on. Then we dive into the definition and uh, the, the interest in inequality constraints, why we want to deal with constraint optimization problems. Then we see a solution method for solving inequality constraint problems, the interior point method. And then we see uh, also the connection to linear programming and linear programming will relate us back to some of the examples that we have seen in the first lecture in the historical uh, um, background. And at the very end, we will see uh, some outlook with soft equality constraints. And this will be then a motivation for the next lecture, lecture four, which will then be about equality constraints. But today, inequality constraints, uh, this will enable a lot of very interesting applications. So um, at the very end, you will see how your superpowers have increased and how there are already a lot of new applications that come into, into the uh, into possibility to, to be solved by, by the methods you learned here. Okay, some notions of topology. Uh, what you see here is a blue circle that shall represent an open set. And uh, an open set is a set that does not include, uh, quote unquote, its boundary. And we have to make this more, more precise what we mean by boundary. And uh, so here we have all the the points x and y in the 2D plane that are less than one away from the zero point. So we have here all the points inside of our circle, but not the point that are exactly on the boundary. And what uh, is uh, the definition of the open set is that if I take a point inside of my set, I can always find some very small epsilon where a circle or a ball of radius epsilon is completely contained in the set as well. So here big P will be our blue uh, circle. And uh, for any point that I select here inside my blue circle, I uh, can find some epsilon and the point around, or the epsilon ball around that point will be fully contained inside P as well. And uh, of course, if I take a point on, on the boundary, a point that would be exactly one uh, distance apart from, from zero, there it would not be possible to find such an epsilon, um, but uh, the boundary is not included and uh, therefore this works for all the points that are uh, part of the set big P. Okay, so here we have the, the notation, a new notation uh, for this ball P and this is just a set of all points that are less than epsilon away from the center point for some norm. So what you see, see here, uh, this notation, this is a norm and this is, um, you can consider that a distance metric and uh, we will see the exact definition and the difference between norm and distance metric in, in the later in the lecture on um, vector spaces. But for now this will suffice. And uh, so these are the open sets and uh, there are also closed sets. So now on the right side, the closed set is the blue circle that does contain the border. So the difference here is that we have a, a smaller or equals than symbol. So all the points that are less or equal to one distance apart from, from zero. And um, well, the, the definition of the closed set is uh, here that if I take the complement and the complement is all the points that are outside of my set. If I take the complement, then the complement is an open set. So for the, all the points in the complement, I can find again an epsilon such that the epsilon ball around that point is fully contained um, in, in the points outside of, of P. Okay, and here again, we have some new notation. Here the complement uh, PC, so this small C up there, this is indicating the, the complement in our, in our course. And uh, well, from the definition, it's clear that um, the complement of an open set is closed and, and also vice versa. And um, why are open and closed sets important to us? They are important for two points. First of all, it comes in with the definition of being continuous, but also 
uh, we have to look at the limit points. So uh, we are looking at iterative algorithms where over several iterations we are converging closer and closer to some optimum. And uh, the, the, the nice property of a convex or a, of a closed set is that it contains its limit points. What is meant by that? So um, for every converging series that I have inside of my SAP, the point to which this series is converging is also inside of my SAP. Okay, that's maybe a little difficult. Let me uh, explain it with a small example. So here consider the series uh, Pn, where the points Pn are 1 over n. And so I'm increasing n, going from 1 to 2 to 3 and so on, and creating thus a series 1, a half, a th one third, and so on. And now let's assume that we have our set P equal to the points between 0 and 1, where 0 is not included. So here this, open, this normal bracket on the left side, this indicates that the zero is not included, but the one with the ang with a with a box bracket, uh, the one is included in our set. And now we can see very easily that all our points are included in that set because I can increase my n to some very large number, and still I will get some result one over n, where this uh, point is included in my set big P. However, it is converging to the point zero. So zero is um, the limit to which the series is converging, but zero is exactly at the border and is outside of my set big P. So here we have an example where uh, we have a series uh, where all points are uh, a convergent series, where all points are in P, but it converges to something outside of P. Okay. And uh, what are the, the properties of open and closed sets? So what are the operations that we can perform on open and closed sets? So for the open sets, I can take some, um, some finite number of open sets and form the intersection of them. Yeah? So if, if you recall, the intersection is uh, all the points that are in both sets. So here I have my set one and I have my set two, and then uh, consider these are open and then uh, the points in the intersection are these. And if I take any finite number of open sets and compute the intersection between all of them, it will still be an open set. Uh, if I consider now the union, so the union are the points that are in, in either of these sets. So here, this is my first set, and I have my second set. And then the union would be all the points that are in at least one of these sets. Um, and if I take the union of any number of open sets, then the resulting set will also be open. Okay, but here you see the difference. On, in one case, we said that we can take the union of any collection of open sets. And in the other case, it only worked for the intersection of a finite number of open sets. And um, so only for a finite number of open sets, we have a guarantee that the intersection will also be open. And um, why we cannot guarantee this for an infinite number of sets that we are intersecting. This is shown in the following example. Now here we construct a series of open sets. Yeah? So here we have our set AN, and the set AN are the points between minus one over N and one over N. But the border here is, is, is excluded. Yeah? So all the points that are within this range, but not at uh, at the border. And uh, now if we let this n go to infinity, the, the range will get smaller and smaller and will get, go closer and closer to the zero point. So if we now here take the union of an infinite number of sets, of n equals 1 going to infinity, then there will be only one point exactly that is contained in all of these sets. And that is zero. And um, by definition, or um, what, what you see here, is that uh, zero is a closed set uh, because uh, for all points that are uh, in the complement, uh, I can draw this epsilon ball and this can be proven. So here we have a counter example where uh, we can we take an, an intersection of an infinite number of open sets and the result is a closed set. 
Yeah? And therefore, this top one here, it only works for, for a finite number of, of open sets. Okay. What are the operations that we can perform on the closed sets? So again, here we can uh, look at the intersection and the union. The intersection of any collection of closed sets is closed. So also an infinite number of uh, closed sets. If I take the intersection, I know that the result will again be closed. And for the union of closed sets, I can take a finite number of closed sets and take the union of them. And uh, the result will also be closed. But I only have the guarantee if I do this for a finite number of closed sets. And again, here's a, a small counterexample. Let's look at the closed set um, Bn, that is the range of points between 1 over n and 1 minus 1 over n. And uh, now uh, let's do the union. And uh, in, what you see here is the, um, the borders, or quote unquote borders, um, uh, or the set is increasing and uh, it becomes larger and larger and it more and more fills the space between uh, 0 and 1, but it never exactly reaches uh, the point 0 to be included and it never exactly reaches the point 1 to be included. So here the, the union of an, of an infinite number of these open sets, uh, of these closed sets, will be an open set. And this is a counterexample, therefore we don't have the guarantee that uh, an infinite union or an, uh, a union of an infinite number of closed sets will remain closed. Yeah. Okay. But uh, so far it uh, might have looked as if open and closed were contradictory properties. Yeah? So if I take the complement of an open set, it is closed and vice versa. But they are actually not contradictory. They can exist in parallel and there can also be sets that are neither open nor closed. Yeah, for example, here, this set uh, that is open on one end, or the, the range that is open on one end and closed on the other end, um, uh, this total set is neither open nor closed. And there are also examples of sets that are both open and closed. So, uh, for example, the empty set. And uh, you can just uh, run this through the definition of open and closed set, and you will see that the definition is holding uh, in, in both cases. Okay, um, so far I've talked about the quote-unquote border, but this is not the mathematical term. What we should be talking about is the closure and the interior. So the, the closure of a set P is the smallest closed set that contains P. So if I imagine that I have here some, some open set, uh, where the border is not included, therefore I draw this uh, with a dotted line. Uh, and then the closure is the smallest closed set um, that is totally includes all the points in the blue set. Uh, so all the points here in my blue set have to be included in, in, the, in the green closed set. And I'm looking for the smallest closed set that, that contains all the points. And on the other side, the interior of a set is the biggest open set that is contained inside P. And uh, there can be also cases where the, the, the interior is empty, meaning I have a set that is somehow well defined, it contains a lot of points, but if I'm looking at the interior, so if there's an open set um, that is fully included, then I only find the, the empty set. And let's see here at some examples. Uh, for example, uh, here I have a set with only one point. Yeah? So here the set P, it only contains one point little p. And uh, if I try to draw an epsilon ball around that, I will find out that I can choose epsilon however small I, I can. And um, uh, the epsilon ball will not be fully included in, in my set P. Yeah? And therefore, um, I can the only the only open set that I can that is smaller than uh, than P is the empty set. And um, well, this obviously is also true if I have many points that are somehow sparse in space. So I can imagine that there are more points inside here, but our, the set is not densely filled. And uh, then again, uh, this set has an empty interior. And an example for that will be um, the, the discrete numbers. 
or the, the natural numbers. Um, so let's imagine I am looking, I'm doing an optimization and I'm only looking at whole numbers. So I only accept one and two and three, so whole numbers, but I don't accept uh, real numbers that are somewhere in between. And then here I have a, a sparsely filled uh, grid or I have a grid uh, with a lot of space in between and the interior of this solution set or this interior of the set of possible solutions will be empty and this has consequences for the, for the optimization algorithms or for many of the optimization algorithms that we will encounter later on. Okay. But there are also other examples of uh, sets with an empty interior. For example here we have a set that is constrained to lie on some diagonal. So I have two axes, I have um, x and y, and um, uh, the set P I'm looking at, these are all the points that here lie, that lie on the diagonal. And uh, of course, um, there are many points lying on the diagonal and it's also in some way uh, dense, densely populated. Um, but again, I cannot draw such an epsilon ball around any point in there where the epsilon ball is, is totally uh, included. Because it's like um, I have uh, flattened out this space or I have compressed and um, I've taken away one, one dimension. And uh, this leads to uh, the fact that in the original embedding space where my set lives, I cannot find an epsilon ball um, surrounding my, my point P. That where the epsilon ball is fully included in, in my set uh, big P. And uh, we will later see a couple of constraints where, for example, I, I want to do an optimization and I apply the constraint that I'm only looking at points on the diagonal or points that fulfill some other condition. And then it can also happen that uh, my, my solution set uh, has an empty interior and this has consequences.